So essentially, there are three main levels when it comes to creating React-style content. Number one, bare bones, where you just simply have a reaction. Number two, well-edited React videos. And number three, next level React videos that just knock it out of the park. And I'm gonna show you what goes into creating all three of them. But really at the core of all of these different levels is the exact same thing. And it's just the editing that sets them apart. So what is that core? Well, it's just simply a reaction to a clip. For example, look at this reaction video from CLR Bruce Rivers. Now this is a bare bones react video. There's barely any editing on it. And essentially all it is, is him setting up a camera in front of him, capturing his reaction. Sometimes it's not even framed really well. Then on his desk, he has a laptop with the video he's gonna watch, probably screen recording it. And he just presses play when he wants to play the video, pause when he wants to add his own opinion or professional expertise and so on until the video is done. It's that simple. And the only real technical thing you're gonna have to do here is to sync up your camera footage with the screen capture. And that's really easy to do. You can just manually sync up the clips, you know, find the point where you click play, put the start of the screen capture at that point, make sure that it all lines up and there you go. But there is a quicker and more exact way to do this. And all you have to do is play a clip out loud on your computer that your camera also picks up. Now, once you have those two clips where your camera and the screen capture have captured that audio sound, so it could be a song, drag both clips into Premiere Pro, stack them on top of each other, select both of them, and then right click and click synchronize. Just simply click OK. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna analyze the audio waveforms of both of these clips and line them up perfectly. It works in probably a minute or less, depending on how long the clip is, and it will save you so much time and headache trying to line them up, getting them perfect. Seriously, you'll thank me later. And then the only other technical thing you're gonna need to learn how to do is just to scale down the clip and put it in the corner so you have your reaction in the background, you have the clip in the foreground, and that's it. Now where you put your scaled down clip really depends on your setup and you can use your eye line as a guide. For example, if we look at Bruce, he's looking down to the lower left corner of his screen where his laptop is placed, so it makes sense to put the clip in that corner. Real rejects are watching a screen in front of them, so having the clip at the bottom of the screen also makes sense. If you're looking to the left, put the clip on the left side. If you're looking to the right, obviously put the clip on the right side. Always use your eye line as a guide, otherwise it's gonna look a bit weird. But if you wanna enhance these simple bare bone videos, something I've noticed a lot of people do is emphasize their reaction by cutting out the clip entirely and just having the camera footage when it's your opinion, when it's your reaction, because that eliminates all distractions and puts the focus on you. And then slightly moving up the scale, we have people like Graham Stephan and KSI who have slightly more involved editing. It makes the videos more engaging, but they're still pretty bare bones. They're pretty simple. Real Rejects is another great example of this. And I found this really useful tutorial from KSI's editor, Mo Saeed, who broke down how to edit React videos super, super efficiently, something that I actually deployed in my own React video, which I'll share with you later. And it makes the editing process so much more enjoyable, so much quicker and so much more efficient, especially when you're editing a video that's like an hour and a half long. Definitely go check out his video. It is a game changer if you wanna do React style content. Now, if you wanna make more engaging or captivating reaction videos like Sniper Wolf or Markiplier, all you really need to do is add a few simple editing techniques. Things like zooms, close-ups, and some simple text overlays go a long way to making the videos much more engaging. Now, if you want that split screen view kind of like this, then all you have to do in Premiere Pro is either use a mask or the crop effect and simply just adjust it to your liking, whether you want it to be you know, one quarter of the screen or half of the screen, and then just move it across to the side, put your reaction clip behind that, underneath that layer, and you're good to go. But if you wanna do those zooms within the mask without moving everything, all you need to use is the transform effect. If you're using a layer mask, just drag the transform effect onto the clip and you can do the keyframes to zoom in or whatever you wanna do, it'll work fine. If you're using the crop effect, however, you're gonna to have to drag that transform effect on top of the crop effect. So you'll notice in the effects panel, you'll see the different effects in the order they're applied to the clip. All you need to do to make sure this works is have transform above crop. And you can get a zoom effect like this or move around your clip while retaining your mask. Now we can't talk about React videos without at least mentioning my fellow Aussie, Laserbeam, who's absolutely killing it in this area. Now he takes a very similar approach, but has a bit more fun with shaky camera effects, which you can get from cinecom.net for free, or for $9 if you wanna use it on your channel for monetization 
monetization purposes. And he also does some simple tracking of his facing clips when he's moving around and just increases the production value. Also notice how many extreme close-ups there are of his face, which really serves to highlight the emotional reaction he's having. And this is something that's done in Hollywood films all the time because it really puts the focus in on the emotion, cuts out all the distraction and focuses just on that, which then allows the audience to empathize with you even more. Now these first two levels of React videos are great, but if you wanna make the best of the best, then let's have a look at these insane guys who are making next level reacts. Starting with Jacksepticeye. Now the core of Jack's videos are still just a split screen view of him reacting to a clip. It's that simple, but here's where he takes it to the next level. He has lots of quick zooms where you actually see the clip zoom in. I imagine he uses the transform tool in Premiere Pro to do this. He also has slide transitions. Something I forgot to mention with Sniper Wolf's videos is she does something really interesting by adding sort of like a palette cleanser between clips with a color bar TV transition with that sound effect. And this is a great technique to separate clips that are different. And something else that both Sniper Wolf and Jack both do is include simple background music. Then Jack or his editor also adds a lot of extreme close-ups, plays around with the movement of his camera, kind of like laser beam, and adds facial distortions for comedic effect. But the true separator of this level from the rest and what separates Mr. Beast and Jack from all those other creators is visual representations of jokes, and what they say. To illustrate this, let's check out one of Mr. Beast's reacts videos. Then somebody came in and bought three, and the third one, that was the 10 million. Imagine winning $1,000 on a scratch off ticket, and then you use that money to buy another one and you win 10 million. So notice that instead of just saying their opinion or saying a joke, Jimmy gives his editors free reign to add graphics, visual effects, sound effects, and stock footage to visually represent what they've just said, which makes it way more engaging way more interesting and can often make it way, way more humorous. <laughs> now I'm gonna make a full breakdown of how to do this editing style in the future because there is so much that goes into it. But for now, I'll leave you with a game-changing insight that I found about Jimmy's editing process, which will help you do effects like this in just minutes. So you'll notice that after watching Mr. Beast Reacts videos, there are a lot of clips like this. Me, I will fight you in Why court. Why don't you fight the owner? I'll sue the viewers, I'll sue the state, I'll sue the court of the law. But Jimmy doesn't film on a green screen. So how does he get the clips behind him and all those fancy effects? What they're doing here is called rotoscoping. And essentially all this is, is cutting out your subject frame by frame in your footage. Now this sounds tedious because it is, but there are some useful tools that can help us speed up this process. So you can get rid of that background and add whatever you want in there. Now originally I thought the best tool for this was After Effects. You know they have a rotoscoping feature, the roto brush, which is really useful, but it is still slow and oftentimes the selection with that can be pretty inaccurate, so you still have to go frame by frame to clean everything up. I knew there had to be a better solution, so I did some digging and I came across this video, which led me to a website, and then I saw this, that Mr. Beast is listed as using this service, and it just clicked. Of course you would use this, artificial intelligence to speed up the process. And so the service that I found, Runway Green Screen, will allow you to rotoscope your footage, even if it's several minutes long, really fast and really efficiently, even if you don't have a really good PC because it uses their servers to do all the rendering and effects. It's a really powerful tool. Unfortunately, it's a little bit pricey if you wanna get the full power out of this software, but considering how much time you spend, if you're gonna make videos and put in the effort like Mr. Beast to make that type of production level, this service is a no brainer. Now, once you have your video, all you have to do is make your thumbnail. And what I found works best is just having a really interesting part of the clip or the thumbnail of the video you're watching and a picture of your face reacting to that content. Obviously, extreme reactions work better. They get your attention. And as we said before, they allow audiences to empathize and understand the emotion you're conveying better. And you can check out my latest attempt at a reaction video here where I went for around a level two to three, not quite Mr. Beast level yet, but I tried. I hope I see you there.